Valentine's and or Galentine's Day. It's a lot of attention from retailers. However, members of the LGBTQ community may be recognized during Pride Month, but are often overlooked on Valentine's Day. So, if you want to make the celebration a bit more inclusive, stay tuned to see how I created this Valentine's Day gift set for some friends of mine who are a same gender couple. The set includes a sea turtle snack charcuterie board, matching cheese tools, and complimentary coasters. Hello, gentle people. If this is your first time visiting my channel, or if you are a returning subscriber, welcome to this Sparrow Art Vibes video tutorial. I create custom and personalized products and gifts, and I hope that you will see or hear something that inspires you to create something beautiful. I'm Hazel, a retired educator turned resin artist, and I like the term entrepreneur. And every week I share how I create the products that are available in my Etsy shop and my Shopify boutique. And I'm adding new holiday and special occasion gifts to my shops each week. As always, if you like what you see but don't want to take the time to make it yourself, please feel free to purchase it at Sparrow Art Vibes shop on Etsy. Also, if you are inspired by my video, please do like, share, and of course subscribe if you aren't a current subscriber. And uh, now let's just take a look at the materials we need to make our same gender Valentine's Day gift set. Okay, gentle people, let's look at the materials that we need for our Valentine's Day gift set. So we have a 16 by 12 inch uh, cutting board. <clears throat> and I happen to like this board because it does have a juice groove on it. And of course, we will put the design on the opposite side. To go with those, the board, uh, we have a set of tools. And so we're going to take one, two, three, four cheese tools out of that box. This set will have two beverage coasters, two hexagon coasters, so we need two um, hexagon coaster molds. I always try to present the materials in the order that I'll use them. So the next thing we'll need is our painter's tape. I always basically prime my boards with a uh, white gesso. Uh, you can always use acrylic paint, but gesso is designed for that purpose. Uh, and of course, you need a brush to paint the gesso on. And then we will need, we will need some assorted um, acrylic paints. And so I have the Master's Touch Ocean Green. I have the PBO. I love this stuff. The PBO um, Iridescent. The PBO Iridescent Green Yellow. I, this is gorgeous. And then I have some extreme sheens. Haven't decided which ones I'm going to use, so I'm just going to put a bunch of them out here. I have a teal. I have a aquamarine. I have a pink tourmaline. And you'll see why I have the pink um, in a minute. And we will do our artwork on our water slide inkjet decal paper, which we will just fit in there like so. I don't know which color vinyl I'll use for the lettering, but I'm just gonna lay this one here so we know that we need vinyl. And once all of that is put together, 
Then it's time for us to close everything up with our resin. So we need our Craft Smart Part A resin. We need our Craft Smart Part B hardener. We'll need a measuring cup. Yeah, where can I put that? Stick that there. Using two colors of mica powder, so I have two stir sticks. We, of course, need our nitrile gloves. And for mica powder, we need the mica powder for the beverage coasters. And so we're going to be doing the rim in the Eye Candy Okinawa Blue. And we are going to be doing the background in the May Spring White Chalcedone. And I do believe that's everything. So let's clear this off the table and we'll start to have some fun. And the first thing, uh, first decision you have to decide is which way you want your artwork to go. Do you want your artwork to go across the bottom of the board or do you want your artwork to go lengthwise? And um, this is the artwork. So I have these two little turtle guys uh, with their little bow ties and the little hearts around them. I think that's kind of cute. So I looked at placing, and this is the artwork for the board. So I looked at placing it across this way, and then I looked at placing it the long way. So I think I'm gonna place it the long way. And so what I always do is just take a pencil and just kind of rough out the area that I want to put the gesso. And I'm not going straight across, I'm kind of going mm, kind of down. And this is not going to be centered. I'm going to, let me turn it this way. I'm not centering this artwork on here. I'm going to move these over a little this way. Um, and then I can put the names right here. So we're just going to, this is marked so I know where to put my tape on the other side and where was the line over here. All right, so the first thing we need to do is flip this over and get the back side of this tape. Okay, and then I always just run along the edge there. And then we're going to take our razor blade and just trim this along this edge. Oh, 
right. And then we're just going to run our scissors, <clears throat> or your fingers, it doesn't matter, to make sure that edge is tight. And then while we are taping, I was doing this in separate um, steps and then decided, no, do it all at once. So now that we've taped our board, we're gonna go ahead and take the back of our tools. And so we're just cutting a piece of tape to go. Again, it's useful to just get that edge good. And then take our razor blade. And trim that. so that you're only putting tape on the back side. So we're going to paint the top and paint the sides. Again, you know, I like for my color to run over the edges. So we've done that one. And different people have different ways of um, trimming. Uh, I like to cut from the top. Uh, I did a class with a woman who said this was hard for her to cut from this side. And so what she did was turned her tool over and then she ran her blade along her tool like that. Um, I thought it was just difficult to get this front edge so you you do it however it works best for you Okay, and then once the backs of these are taped, then you're going to just pull a piece of tape off and you're just going to cover your blades. And so basically, this metal, this metal rim right here, we don't want our resin over this metal rim, so we're going to tape right at the edge there. And again, like you see here, because this is a curved edge, Again. So we have our back taped, but then we have our metal cap taped as well. And again, this is to do two things. One, protect the blade from resin, and two, protect this top edge. Okay, 
those are all taped. <clears throat> so the next thing we want to do is just prime the area that we're going to be putting our artwork and our paint on with the gesso. A lot of people online do not do this step. They just put their artwork or their paint or their resin directly on the board. Um, I do not do that for a couple of reasons. Okay, so I put, I prime my board with gesso for two reasons. One, um, if you're using a light color, you don't want the wood to show through. And two, if you're using uh, light colors, they just look more vibrant. Um, pink on white certainly looks brighter than pink on this, this beige, brown, whatever. So we're gonna just take our gesso here our white gesso and we already outlined where we want our artwork to go and so we're just going to generously Just going to generously paint our board with some gesso and this does not have to be perfect because this is just a, a undercoat we're going to go over this with um, acrylic paint but this is just so when we put our paint on here our paint is pretty And then you want to make sure that you get your edges. And then we just have that elevated so that can dry. Oh, I'm bleeding. Where am I bleeding from? Oops. I cut my thumb. I cut my thumb with the razor. Oh, that's not good. So here's a, a, a cautionary tale. Be careful using your tools. Uh, I am wiping this off with alcohol and then I will go back and I will sand these areas that have the blood spots on them because we don't want to be transferring any kind of pathogens. Alcohol kills most everything but we'll sand that oh yeah 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 I cut my thumb I'm back band-aid on my thumb and so now we just need to um, paint our tools here And again, this is so that the color shows up so much nicer against white than it does against the wood. Your colors are more vibrant.
All right, and so we'll just leave those to dry for about an hour or so, and then we'll come back in and we'll add color. Okay, I am back. Our gesso, oh, oops. Oh, well that's not a good thing, yeah. Okay. Our gesso is dried so we can do our back, paint our background. But before we do, remember I cut my thumb and I wiped the blood off of this um, with the alcohol but I said I was going to sand it because wood is porous. And so I want to make sure that I have that sand. So if there's anything that's in that grain, it'll be gone. So let me. Okay, so now I have full confidence that my board is safe. And we'll just go over it one more time with some alcohol to get rid of that dust. But yeah, I want to make sure everything, you don't want to sell anything to anybody that's not um, correct. So now what we want to do is just paint the background on this and again we're using our ocean green and so again this is this is more of a teal but I'd rather go with a lighter background and then I've got a variety that's that's a closer but I like the lighter background. <clears throat> yeah, I'd rather go with the lighter background and then add color to deepen it than to go with something dark and try to lighten it. So let's just, where's my paintbrush? Where's the brush I had earlier? Oh, okay. All right. And again, this is um, we are just covering up our gesso here because we're going to go back over this with the balloon. I think. Did I have the balloons in the? I don't think I had the balloon. Um, I don't think I put balloon in the materials. Oops. I guess I'll have to use sponges then. That's all we need for that. And again, we're going to do the same thing with our tools. Just giving these uh, background color. All right, so we will allow these to dry about an hour. The acrylic paint dries quite quickly. And then we will come in. We will add the turtle artwork here. Then we will do our painting, allow this to dry, and we'll start on our beverage coasters. Okay, these have dried. 
And so now we want to put our artwork. Just set those out the way for now. We want to put our artwork on here. Again, I had printed um, this turtle couple. And so it was then printed on the water slide, the, what's that say, printer's jack, on the water slide paper. And so we are just going to cut this, dip it in the water, apply it, let that dry, and then we'll come back in and get our painting done. But you can see the difference in the quality um, of the uh, colors. So let's get this cut. my water. We're going to drop our artwork into the water. Alright, so let's see if this is ready to slide. Looks like it is. I'm going to switch these. Alright, so we're going to position that right about Right, and so we're just going to drop this paper towel on here to soak up all the excess moisture right away. And then we'll start to squeegee. And I'll get a new towel so you can see the water that comes from underneath. You can see that water right there. And you always want to go from the center to the outside. Those guys are kind of cute. They look good with their pink bow ties. Look at all that water. Watch. Look at that. Whee! 
I didn't plan on that to happen. Let's. up the edge on that so you know what I'm going to do. I am simply going to cut that away. I'm just going to get rid of that. And the same on this edge. I'm going to get rid of this part that just, oh, that came up on my finger. Okay, so let me continue to squeegee this so we have a nice smooth surface. Oop! I don't know why that keeps wanting to come up. Alright, that looks pretty good to me, those little guys there. That couple, and so we're going to give this, again, I keep saying an hour, an hour, an hour. We're going to give this about an hour to dry, and then we'll come back and we'll paint that. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and get started painting the tools here. Okay, so I am going to paint these tools. I am using, um, I'm going to set them on here as I paint them. That's why the parchment paper is here. And we need um, something for them to rest on. Okay. Yeah, that's good. So while that dries, I'm going to paint these. And I'm going to be using my balloon. I'm going to just stick my balloon in here and just press my balloon against these edges. So we're going to start with the ocean green that we had. They have an ocean green. Then I have a Deco Art uh, Metallic in teal. I'm going to put a drop of that. On there. I have a Deco Art Extreme Sheen Aquamarine. Put that on that. Again, this is totally, this color is not in here. Um, when I do the other sea turtles, the big ones, this color I use, but I like it so much. I'm going to just put a little dab right there, a little dab of the PBO iridescent uh, green yellow. And then all I'm going to do is plop that in there. And see, I like the texture that that makes. being careful that I don't cut myself again on these darn blades.
but I like the texture that the balloons create. That little pattern there, I like that. Again, it's important to have enough um, paint on your tile to, to create that um, little bit of depth so you have some texture. Okay, and so now that I actually have this on here, I'm going to go ahead and just start adding some, some pattern to, to this board. And this does not have a name for a color. We want our darker colors at the bottom. lighter colors near the top. Only because when you're looking at water, that's how water, how the ocean is. because I'm doing this upside down so it looks very different to me from the way it probably should look. upside down. 
actually, yeah, let me turn this around. Doing this upside down is not dumb. Because I have the iridescent green yellow on the tools, I need to add a little more to the board. That way this looks like it's a matched set. Yeah, I like that. And I had the pink I had the pink and I was going to add the pink because the turtles have the pink hearts um, and I'm just not feeling the pink on here I don't know I'm not feeling the pink on here too much uh, yeah I think I'm going to leave this like this Alright, I'm going to leave it like that. We'll let this dry. Um, again, the pink I was going to put on here to bring out the pink on the hearts. But uh, I think I'm going to just leave it like it is. I kind of like... Um, I kind of like the, the yellow accents. Uh, you know what? I am going to go ahead and do the sides. Let me lift this. Go ahead. So I don't know if this is in the frame of the camera, but what I'm doing now is just uh, squeezing, squeezing paint onto the balloon and going along the edge here. Yeah, I'm just going. 
going along the edge of the balloon here. The edge of the board with the balloon. I'm sorry, I said that wrong. Um, my turtles could have been a little bit bigger, um, but we're not going to worry about it now. They are there. This will dry, and then um, I'll put the name on here. Now that I can see what color this is, I think I'm going to go with a lighter vinyl. But uh, let me turn this so you can see what we're working with here. all over me. Some acrylic paint on the edge there. Okay, so I'm liking um, I'm generally liking that. Uh, this tool needs a little more something. Okay, so we are done. Um, that's a little darker than I want it. I'll come back and see what it looks like when it's dried. Uh, but yeah, adding the iridescent green yellow there matches what's on the tool. So yeah, and that's a little... Okay. I am back. This is all dry. Let's need this. We don't need this anymore. And um, let me these down. They are dry. And what we need to do now is add the names to this. Uh, as I'm looking at this, the only thing I wish I had done was made the artwork larger um, compared to all of this space. The turtles are small. They could be like, they could come up this high. They're a little tiny, but that's okay. Um, so now I need to, I cut the name out uh, in vinyl earlier when I printed the turtles. So now we're going to attach the name. And I opted to go with uh, the Paper Studio. This is colored, what, light blue shimmer. Um, I could go with a really light color to contrast. I could go with a dark color to contrast, but I chose a color that almost matches because I want the turtles to be more of the focus than the name. So the name almost won't be noticeable. Somebody will say, well, you can't read the name. Well, yeah, you can, but again, I don't want the name to like dominate. So let's take the backing off of this 
and we're going to put this right about right about there. Okay, perfect, perfect. So again, you can read the name, but the name does not draw attention to itself, I guess is what I wanna say. You can read the name, but the name is not competing with my little turtles there. So now what we need to do is just um, mix our clear resin. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, so we need to mix our clear coat of resin and then we're going to cover all, seal all of this. And then we'll work on our beverage coasters. So let me. tools level and elevated all right so we need to mix some resin and you know how I am about my table being not level so you know I put my popsicle sticks under here uh, I don't really pull the leveler out because I know what the issue is. Okay, so we are going to mix 80 milliliters of resin. Uh, these cups, these markers are not uh, the best on new measuring cups, but I've got 40 mark there and 80 mark there. So we are going to do 40 milliliters of the Part B hardener. And then 40 milliliters of the Part A resin. And of course, I forgot my reminder to always use the manufacturers. <clears throat> and I forgot my reminder that you should always follow manufacturer's instructions. We are doing the Craft Smart Clear Casting and Coating Resin. And it tells us that we should mix equal amounts. Mix equal amounts of part A and part B so that we have a mixing ratio of one to one. We did that, 40 and 40. And then it tells us to slowly mix for a minimum of five minutes. So that's what we're going to do. Set our timer for five minutes. Okay, so we are starting our timer.
All right. So we need the oops. We need these elevated oops. going to leave these on here but I am going to put each one of these on I think they'll stay is not how I normally do it because I'm usually not doing it at the same time that I'm doing something else. Okay, so all I am going to do now is just put uh, a little bit of resin on each of these tools right across the top along the sides and edges. This on the sides is going to run off so this is just a coating and we'll come back in a little while and uh, Put some more resin on here but this on the sides is just going to run off I'm telling you that in advance so don't get upset it will run off the sides here biggest concern is with the top. You want to make sure that the top and make sure that you are right along the edge here where this tape is. And because this has texture, make sure your resin is in your nooks and your crannies. And again, these are on, I'm placing these on top of my silicon stir sticks because I need the resin to be able to drip down and off of these, but I don't want it sticking to the paper necessarily. So if you elevate it, All right, and now we just take the rest of our resin and we just pour it on our board. And then I like to use a palette knife to spread my resin. And that's because it has the angle, so when I'm holding it, I don't have to worry about my fingers getting in the resin. That's why I like these. And remember, we never push our resin all the way to the edge when we're starting, because when we heat it up, it's going to spread and we do not want it to run beyond the edge of our artwork. Oh, that's pretty. All 
alrighty, and we're gonna hit this with the heat gun to pop air bubbles. And again, I always say once you do that, let this set for about five minutes because the resin heats up and then the resin will begin to spread. So this resin is going to start to move toward that edge. In the meantime, you can take your just spatula, your palette knife here and just begin to go around these edges. Do your edges with a really thin coat. All right, and this doesn't seem to be doing any moving, so now we can start to, we can add a little more resin, and then we can start to move toward that edge there. to get rid of air bubbles. nice I see that I have <clears throat> an air bubble right there we're gonna have to try and fill that in but again that's that's our board so what we need to do now is just flip this over run the heat gun along this edge to get rid of this tape Perfect. Absolutely perfect. And then you will see just some little ripples along that edge. And again, I always run my tape. I always leave just a little rim there that I can trim off. So let's get... Okay, so I was trying to say there's a little teeny ridge right here that we are going to heat and uh, peel up. You'll see it. and I just take my sander and I just make sure that edge is smooth. All right, so you see the back side looks nice. Our edges are nice and smooth. And then that is the front of our board. And so the last thing we do on our board is we oil our board. Uh, I always oil them when I get before I get ready to ship them. If you have a, a wooden cutting board, 
You should oil it every couple of months or so to keep the wood grain supple. Um, I use uh, this brand, what is it, 13 Chefs, and it does say that it's food grade mineral oil. A um, couple of drops is all you need. A lot of people will oil their boards with a cloth. I don't because I found that the cloth absorbs most of the oil. I like to do it with my fingers. And again, these boards are new, so they don't necessarily need to be oiled, but it's nice to have a, a nice seal on it before you send it to the customer, because when they take it out of the box, it really looks, it really looks nice. But your cutting board should be oiled every couple of months, and you know you don't put uh, cutting boards in a dishwasher. You do not soak them in water at all. It will warp your wood. So we just want to now set this aside. And you see me running my finger inside this hole making sure that's oiled as well. And again, with your cutting boards, you wash them by hand, you dry them, and you dry them standing up. That way, any moisture that's on there will drain off. But I'm satisfied. I like Todd and Dan. And now, let's work on our tools. So again, we need to get the tape off of these. And so we start with, again, heat is our friend. This is a nice, this actually is a nice pad. This is a, um, I don't know what you call it. It's a heat retardant. It's a heat retardant pad. Um, plumbers use it when they're soldering stuff. So if they um, are using their blowtorch, they don't burn whatever is behind whatever they're trying to solder. So I like this. So we're going to heat this up. And then we are going to score this right along that band look how nicely that comes off see the band that's nice and then we're going to heat the back to get the tape off the back myself yesterday to burning myself today, right? Okay, so there's your tool. That 
it's gorgeous. And then we'll come back and we'll sand this. But we're going to, first of all, trim this uh, band closer. Let's trim our band right to Right. And then what I always do, like with the board, like with the board, I then sand, I then sand these edges. And again, when I switched these um, sanding bands out, it's because this one's coarse and this one's fine. So I wanted a really fine, smooth edge there. Now, let me see some things I need to share. sanded all of these edges so they're nice and finished again it's how you finish your work that's as important as the work itself so those edges are sanded but on this one I want you to see that the resin pulled up right there I've got a little break so what I do in that case, you actually have a couple of options. If you have UV resin, you can mix some UV resin and um, go over, mix some UV resin, add some mica powder to it, and uh, do that uh, spot right there. But you see that I pulled out my markers, and which one is it? Oh, this one. And so what I prefer to do is just take my marker and just color that in. Yeah, you don't notice that. Let's put a little blue on there. So again, if you need to touch up anything, that's the way to do it, is use your markers. And so, so I have my Deco Art, uh, what is this? Dura Clear Gloss Varnish. And so I don't even squeeze this into a container. I just put a little bit on the edge of my brush like so. And then I just go around and I just seal this edge where I sanded in the same way that we do with everything else you know I'm always saying if you sand the edge then you need to go back and you need to go over that edge all right so our tools are done 
They just need to be cleaned off. These blades need to be wiped off so they look nice and shiny and clean and 